So thanks again for joining us, uh, David Sobel with Proven Resource, and this is a webinar that we sponsor, A Strong Woman's Financial Transformation in uh, 2018. And I know, again, some of you folks have been expecting Kim Arnett, uh, who is going to speak on the financial rules of the road. But today what we're going to do uh, instead, because she's unfortunately under the weather, uh, I was going to briefly speak about uh, how to hire an attorney, the, the qualities that you want to uh, look for in hiring an attorney, and what frustrates uh, clients when it comes to uh, dealing with attorneys. Most people would say they're always frustrated with attorneys, and guess what? Sometimes I am too. Uh, so, Madeline, how do I get? Pardon me, one minute. I just got to get the slideshow up. Oh, here we go. So, uh, what we have is a um, now. Hold on here. I just want to make sure you folks can see this at home. What do I do with this? Oh, very good. Okay. So, the five reasons why you may not even need an attorney. So. With, with the advent of technology, people tend to go online uh, more often to get their uh, legal information. If you've seen me speak before or read any of my articles, I don't see me, by the way, in the, in the corner anywhere. Pardon me. Because this is I need to see me. Sorry about that, folks. There you are. Okay, there you go. So we could just move this over. Okay. So Madeline, our technologist, Hello. is uh, <laughs> taking care of this. All right. Very good. Uh, anyway, so you'll you'll know, as I was saying, that there's a time and place for seeking legal guidance and information. And uh, there are sometimes areas that you can actually uh, accomplish your legal goals without even hiring an attorney. Um, one of the first items that uh, I see quite a bit, uh, I actually see the remnants of, unfortunately, but it's when people proceed what we call pro per or pro se, which is actually a Latin term, which basically means uh, one is advocating for themselves uh, on behalf, behalf of their own, <coughs> pardon me, interest in front of court. So when you proceed pro se, you're actually accountable for knowing, you have to know all the rules, the laws, et cetera, when you go before a court uh, or go to a judge you're assumed to know uh, what the law is when you represent yourself. So that's representing yourself, uh, again, as pro per pro se. So you can do that. I just want to share with you um, that the law is quite complicated. I always tell clients that it is not, there's no right or wrong answer in the law. There's usually only the best answer for the circumstances uh, at, at the present moment uh, dealing with your situation. So when it comes to proceeding pro se, uh, you need to be aware of the fact that, you know, you have to have the best argument. Uh, sometimes the right argument to you might not be, uh, you know, the right argument for the judge. So it's the best argument um, for the circumstances uh, that present themselves at the time. Uh, so the other thing that you can do when you don't you know, want to hire an attorney is you can go and you can hire a paralegal. Uh, this is very popular. People use paralegals uh, most often in areas uh, that include bankruptcy or probate. And the reason why a paralegal, you know, can be less expensive uh, to work with is because bankruptcy matters or probate matters uh, have a lot of uh, forms that actually are part of the process, uh, the legal process. The, the problem with using a paralegal, however, is a paralegal cannot give you legal advice. A paralegal can only fill in answers to questions that have already been uh, laid out on a piece of paper or in a document. So if a paralegal in any way, shape or form gives you know, a client any legal advice or uh, in, interprets or opines on the law, that paralegal is actually breaking the law. Um, <clears throat> and I'm aware of several cases where a bankruptcy paralegal was filling in documentation and advising the client with regards to um, the long-term circumstances or situations and consequences with regards to uh, uh, filing. And that paralegal actually was found to be practicing law without a license and was actually uh, barred from practicing in the courts thereafter. So uh, 
that is another way that you can you can hire a paralegal to help you complete forms. Um, it, again, in areas that require completion of, of uh, insertion of information into a form, paralegals are fine. Uh, we use them quite often uh, for very basic work. Um, other than that, paralegals are very helpful in, in uh, an attorney's office with regards to certain legal research, as well as completing documentation in which an attorney ultimately has to review. So uh, on to number three, what's uh, another way that you can avoid having an attorney is you can represent yourself in a court of small claims. Um, in, <clears throat> in Michigan, I believe the amount now is around 5,000 or $5,500 in which uh, that's the maximum amount uh, that you can bring a controversy or an issue before the court and you can represent yourself. Here's the thing. There are times, let's say you have a $7,500 claim on any type of civil matter. Uh, let's say it was a contract that uh, was broken or um, you know, uh, damages that you, you're trying to claim against an opposing party. You don't need an attorney uh, if, you, if you decide to forgo uh, $2,500 of this $7,500 and take your file to small claims. So, uh, you know, but you only get one bite at the apple. So let's say you're owed $7,500 and you, you really uh, don't want to use an attorney. Well, then take it to small claims court, but the most you'll be able to get is approximately $5,000 to $5,500. And then you're done. If you win, well, you got a majority of your money, uh, money that you probably would have had to pay an attorney um, you know, if, if you went up to the 7,500, approximately $2,000 would probably be used, uh, to deal with any type of litigation where you need representation. So a small claims court is a great venue when you have a small matter that you're trying to address and trying to get redress or trying to get, uh, you know, compensated. That's again, small claims court is a wonderful area for people to represent themselves. Uh, number four, you consider mediation. One of my favorite uh, things to do um, when we have smaller cases, uh, but you know that exceed five thousand dollars, of course, is I really do prefer that clients try to mediate um, their situation. That means there's a third party who's neutral that comes. And, uh, both parties agree on that third party, what we call mediator, and that mediator sits with the parties and tries to work out a solution uh, to the problem. Both parties have to agree to mediation. It's not a one-sided item. Um, so, you know, if you're having an issue with somebody and they choose not to go to mediation, you're not going to be able to go and sit down and hash that out. I will tell you that most good attorneys, and there are quite a few of them, believe it or not, will try to resolve an issue without going to court and try to resolve by acting as actually a mediator trying to work through a problem. I can tell you on any given day, I'm picking up the phone and calling another attorney or another authority, you know, somebody in the government, et cetera, and trying to work out a solution so that my client doesn't have to litigate. Now, if it's a problem and they're not going to work with us, then we really don't have a choice, but then you have to have an attorney go with you uh, or represent you um, in court. Uh, there are times, however, again, you could go back to item number one, which is pro se, you could go into a circuit court on any matter that you, you know, that you have an interest in. But again, you're held accountable for knowing the law and understanding the protocol of the court. But trained mediators and are usually attorneys. And um, if you're if you have an issue, let's say it's a divorce or a real estate issue, there are or, or bankruptcy, not bankruptcy issue, but debt issue, there are a lot of uh, attorneys out there who are licensed mediators, and what they'll do, they have areas of uh, specialties. Um, divorce mediation is a very big one, and I have quite a few friends who do divorce mediation, and it's often much less expensive than having to go to court and fighting and, and duking it out in court. What will happen is once you have a resolution uh, between the parties, both parties will actually sign a document, and that's a settlement, and they take that to the court, and they file it with the with the court, and that becomes an, as effective as a judgment. So mediation is, uh, you know, one of the, to me, one of the best things to do 
when you have a dispute, but you have to have parties that are, you know, on all sides that are willing cooperate to cooperate. Um, the last item, you can, you know, you don't have to have an attorney. You can do everything on your own. Uh, I would suggest it takes a lot more time. And unfortunately, you have to have a, you know, an iron stomach sometimes to deal with some of the issues that come up in court. So again, you can represent yourself, but you have to, you know, make, make sure you have some extra time to invest with regards to researching the law, understanding how the law applies to your circumstances. And then you also have to be aware of the procedures, filling out paperwork, pleadings, um, any type of discovery. There's, it's a whole process. Uh, you can do it. it. You know, I see people come in. I'm not here to dissuade anybody, but I do have people come into my office on a regular basis who have tried to do certain things on their own as recently as yesterday. Um, and it doesn't often bode well for them. Um, but everybody has different skill sets. And if you feel that you're up for the task, you don't need an attorney to help you. You can do it on your own. The last item, just you know, to be clear, is that um, if you're using money as a consideration when it comes to hiring an attorney, think about why people use attorneys or real estate professionals um, or, you know, or even mediators. The, the problem with law is that it involves people. The problem in real estate is it involves usually people, right? And so you need to have uh, the ability to take the emotion out of the, the equation. And in real estate or in law, the best thing to do is to have a third party, such as an attorney or a real estate agent, act as a buffer. There's somebody that can be more objective. They're there to bring down the emotions, uh, unless you have an emotional attorney or somebody who's very bombastic, that can be problematic. But most often what you wanna have uh, is to, to, you wanna find an attorney or a professional who is there to act as a buffer and act as an advisor. So when you're working on your own, you lose that objectivity, unfortunately, and um, it's necessary, especially when you're pursuing, uh, you know, a matter that's expensive both in time uh, and in emotion. When people are looking to try to save money, it's kind of like being penny wise, pound foolish. It sounds so trite, but sometimes the best money is spent. If it's a, if it's a worthy task, it's worth spending a reasonable amount of money uh, with a professional instead of having to you know, make your own tracks, uh, you know, it doesn't make, to me, it doesn't make sense. I'll, I'll share with you that I too, uh, as an attorney, I actually have my own attorney when it comes to my own business in, in real estate um, and in, in lending. I use somebody completely outside of my office because uh, if you've never heard the adage, he who has a, a client himself as a client is a fool. Uh, it is so appropriate. I see it every day. Uh, that adage is so effective and so meaningful when you see people come in and they're completely frustrated with the, the process or they've spent so much extra time and money pursuing a matter because they don't have the objectivity or the guidance of a professional to, to steer them. I like to tell people that the attorney's job is not to drive the bus. The attorney's job is to basically to smooth out all the bumps in the in the road, to deal with the uh, the the intersections of problems um, on the road. If you have a fork in the road, we're there to guide you. But in the end, we're supposed to give you all the information that you need to make a clear decision on how you wish to drive the bus, how you wish to proceed. So, if money is an issue uh, when it comes to hiring a qualified legal you know, representative, what you want to do is contact an attorney who can give you not only proper legal representation, but give you different uh, types of affordable arrangements that financial arrangements that they can structure with you so that you can afford the legal work that you need. And um, with that, this is, you know, in concluding uh, the five things that you, you know, show that you may not need uh, an attorney, the reasons why you may not need an attorney. 
I just want to quickly and briefly touch upon the items that when you do find an attorney or you're considering hiring an attorney, uh, the items that you might want to consider that frustrate clients. What are the things that you need to know once you hire an attorney um, or you're about to hire an attorney? What are the things that you need to be aware of? So there's several things that people uh, encounter when dealing with an attorney. The first one uh, that has the biggest complaints, uh, according to the American Bar Association, is that that attorneys don't return calls, they're not responsive, and um, they, they don't communicate well with their clients. That, that happens to be one of the number one reasons why people dislike their attorneys. So ask your attorney, what is their, what is their policy with regards to returning a phone call, communication, keeping up a status uh, on, on a file for a client? Um, we have a written policy here at my office. It's called the Sunsets, Sunrise Sunset Policy, and we provide it to all our clients um, once they become engaged with us. And it, it basically sets out how we work with you, how we contact you, how you reach out to us, when can you expect a phone call back, how you schedule a time with us so we can take care of you. So that's the number one thing that frustrates clients. Another item that frustrates clients um, deals with uh, rapport. Uh, if you don't feel that you have a good rapport with your attorney or you can't establish a good rapport with your attorney, I don't know how you can feel comfortable or confident with your attorney. I mean, you don't have to be best friends, uh, but if you have a, a legal option, you want to know it and you want to be spoken to uh, as a, with, you know, a good client, not as a child. I do see, and, and people do complain about attorneys who talk down to them instead of, instead of working with them and explaining options uh, that are available for their, for their uh, conclusion to their legal matter. So developing a rapport, can you feel that, you, you know, do you feel you have a rapport with the person you're about to hire? If you don't, or if you don't feel that you can establish that rapport, you might want to consider looking elsewhere. Another item that becomes problematic for clients is whether or not your attorney shows uh, that they understand your problem or that they have a genuine interest in resolving your problem. Do they share your, you know, your goals, your same legal goals? So often cases will change. Um, you know, you'll come into a, a, an attorney to accomplish a matter and you'll find that through the process, um, maybe the goal has moved, uh, new facts have arisen that, uh, that make uh, the prospects of a legal conclusion more difficult um, or actually easier. So what are the goals you know, that you share with the attorney? Do you have the same end game in mind? Because if you don't, you better have an understanding up front when you're signing you know, uh, an engagement agreement and when you're paying that attorney, you better make sure that you're both on, on the same plane uh, to tackle the problem at hand. Uh, the other thing is whether or not uh, what frustrates clients is, you know, they find that the attorney they hired, this just happened today. I have somebody who hired a criminal attorney, I'm sure a very good criminal attorney, dealing with a real estate matter that they felt there was a fraud issue. It's a real estate fraud issue. It's not a criminal matter uh, that uh, is initially uh, of concern. So if it's involving real estate, go to a real estate attorney. Don't go to a criminal attorney. I, I can tell you I really don't like going to criminal court because I know very little about uh, the criminal procedure and uh, legal process uh, for criminal law. So that's an area I completely stay away from. You need to know when you go to hire an attorney what their specialty is. Just because somebody's an attorney doesn't mean they specialize uh, in every area of law. And the, the American Bar Association says there's approximately 81 uh, legal specialties out there. So make sure that your attorney, before you hire them, is experienced in the area uh, of your concern. And that is a big area of frustration for clients. The last item, believe it or not, well, I, I see it quite often, uh, that frustrates clients is unclear billing. What is your understanding of how you're going to receive a bill what is your understanding of how you're being billed? Um, what, you know, what's the hourly rate? Are you being billed on uh, 
you know, 10 minute intervals, 15 minute intervals? Is it a flat fee? Um, is it uh, a hybrid fee? So you need to understand that going into your relationship with your attorney. And a lot of people get very frustrated, uh, not with me, hopefully, uh, but when it comes to billing, attorneys, um, you know, they may have one thing in mind. You have another thing in mind. The only thing that actually uh, is controlling is the agreement that you have between the parties. So when you engage your attorney, ask them, what is the billing process? How do you, you know, how are you expected to be uh, billed and based on what type of fee structure? So a lot of people have that issue. Um, it's actually the second issue according to the American Bar Association. And with that, I, you know, I appreciate that you took the time tonight to join us. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, we invite you to go to provenresource.com. And you can also give us a call at 888 -789 -1715. Normally, I don't look this small. I don't know, uh, Madeline, what we can do here, uh, real briefly. So there you go. Boy. So again, we invite you to join us uh, the, le the second, no, pardon me, the third Tuesday of every month for our webinar. Every month, we try to bring uh, professionals from all areas of uh, finance, uh, real estate, business, personal development, uh, both men and women who can impart their knowledge and share their information uh, with you, our, our friends and our clients of Proven Resource. So again, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, give us a call at 888-789-1715 or reach out to us at provenresource.com and we're happy to return the call. Thank you again for joining us. Have a good night.